In all the years I watched Action Bowl and was involved in it, I mean, because I was out of the scene, 76, I was out of the scene for 10 years before that. But from 66 into the late 50s, Jeff, when I started seeing Jeff Bowl in 76, nobody impressed me more than Jeff did. I mean, the kid had nerves of steel. Always, he was a young kid then. He was 76, how old? Jeff, Jeff uh, I picked up Jeff. I was in the Navy in 71, and I picked him up while I was on leave. Uh, he, he complained to me he had been bowling as an eight bowler, and he complained to me that he couldn't bowl action anymore right. because the only people that would bowl him was Oscar Pickenheim and Charlie Faino, as, <laughs> and the places where it, it, he couldn't beat them in Green Acre. Uh, uh, he, uh, nobody wanted to bet on him, and he, you know, he's broke. I said, well, Jeff, I said, you got two problems that I can see. First of all, you throw the ball in a circle everywhere you go, and you need about 250 or 180. I said, that's great for bowling tournaments. If you're going to be an action bowler, you got to be able to bowl 250s when you can bowl them. But you got to be able to bowl 201 wherever you go. Right. So one of the ways you do that is you quit throwing the ball in a circle at every goddamn spare you shoot. Right. You learn to throw the ball straight as a fucking arrow and here's the 10 pin, hit the 10 pin. Right. Okay, there's the 6 pin, hit the 6 pin. Okay? No matter what house you go to, you got to be able to look at a one pin spare and knock the thing off because one of the rules of action that I learned is every time you miss a one pin spare you lose the game by less than 10 pins. That's just the way it is. Okay. So the first thing I did is I picked this guy up, I, I taught him how to make spares. Then I took him on a two year tour where he never bowled in, in the organization. I took him to Torrington, Connecticut. I took him to Bristol, Connecticut. I took him to, to Boston, Constant. I took him to Trenton. I took him to Eastern Long Island. Okay, I took him to Pittsburgh. I took him every place you could think of except the New York action. And then when I brought him back to New York action, I set him up to bowl Charlie Faino in a, in a Green Acres, but I picked a pair where Charlie Faino couldn't just lay it up in that track. 25 and 6 in the corner with a little off spot uh, head pin. He beat Charlie Faino that night, seven down. And when Jeff was done with that match, that was the Jeff Kidder that you know. That was the Jeff Kidder. With the ego, the heart and world. With the ego and the heart, and, and the and the equipment and ability to back up. It's one thing to have an ego. It's, 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 when, when you go out there against the best bowlers in the world, it's another thing to get the job done. Okay. And okay. that started my, uh, my 10 year partnership with Jeff Kidder. And I, I have no complaints. That had to be. Okay. And they're not running any benefits for me. <laughs>